this week's plant of the week is eelgrass, which is a type of seagrass. So let's first define what seagrasses are. So seagrasses are aquatic flowering plants, also known as angiosperms. They vary a lot in their morphology, as you can see from this cartoon I drew here. The species of seagrass we're interested in today is eelgrass or Zostra marina. So seagrasses as a group, they have pretty low taxonomic diversity, meaning there's not that many species, only about 60 species, which is pretty low. But let's get back to eelgrass. So eelgrass needs light and it needs space. And we know that light availability decreases as we increase in depth. And what that means is that eelgrass is restricted by depth in where it can grow. And eelgrass is then only usually found in shallow bays and estuaries. And this is a picture of me and one of my undergrads at a restoration, one of our restoration plots, which I can talk about later if there's questions. So eelgrass has a pretty wide global distribution. It's the dominant seagrass species in the Northern hemisphere. And I'm gonna show you a map modified from more in short from 2005, that's gonna show in green literature reports of the genus Zostra. And in the peachish orange color, you're gonna see the range of Zostra marina or eelgrass. And what you can see is that it is very, very common in um, the Northern hemisphere. So eelgrass, along with many other seagrass species, is considered a foundation species. And what that means is that seagrasses, like eelgrass, structure communities by alleviating stress and things like this and providing refuge. We talked about how eelgrass is restricted to shallow water environments because it needs so much light to photosynthesize, because it is a plant. Well, as a foundation species, one of the functions that eelgrass um, uh, provides is it improves water clarity and water quality. And by improving conditions uh, that allow more light to reach deeper depths, it actually improves conditions for itself. So I'm going to walk through how it does that. So imagine that the tide is rising and that water that's moving into a bay or an estuary is filled with sediment, coarse and fine particles of sediment. Well, the seagrass itself acts as like a natural storm buffer or a wave buffer and slows water flow. So if you imagine like the water is flowing and then it hits the wall of seagrass and slows, well that or wave attenuation is going to slow water flow and allow the coarser particulates in the, in the water columns to settle out and that's going to improve water clarity. Now a nice analogy to understand this process is when you're making hot chocolate and you pour the chocolate powder into the hot milk and you stir it, when you stop stirring the chocolate powder starts to settle on the bottom of the mug, right? So imagine the seagrass is the stopping of the spoon and it's that slowing of water flow or of mixing of the hot chocolate is allowing the chocolate powder, or in this case, the sediment to settle out. So eelgrass grows clonally mainly and that clonal expansion is through rhizomatic growth. And what I mean by that is you have a horizontal modified stem called a rhizome that little roots extend down from. And a blade or shoot, photosynthetic material, it then grows vertically. So you can see here in this cartoon that I've drawn that the horizontal rhizome lays like this. And then from it, it continues to grow, 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 grow. Another blade or shoot comes out, another one, another one, another one, and then you get large expansion. And so what that means is that a large seagrass bed that could be as big as your backyard or even bigger could be genetically a single individual. Now, eelgrass beds, they provide many ecosystem services and functions upon which we rely on. And these include recreational and, and more uh, cultural values like um, a place for kayakers, canoers, duck hunters, um, fishermen to utilize. There's the intrinsic aesthetic value of these places. They're beautiful systems. And um, they also provide a nursery habitat to commercially and recreationally harvested species of fishes and invertebrates. If you like Dungeness crab or rockfish or um, red rock crab, 
uh, English sole, halibut, all these things rely on a seagrass bed for a portion, if not their entire life history. And so eelgrass is an extremely important foundation species. And that's our plant of the week.